I would, I would dare say today that I think it would be very important that you get some paper, uh, your iPad, however way you take notes, because this is going to be a day of soul searching. And I believe God is going to really, really speak to us today. And, and I recognize and realize, you know, the, the, the gospel of the kingdom is, is so very important for each and every one of us. And we need to be able to identify identify with the wrongs that are, are, are being played out in our lives. We have to be able to see ourselves the way our precious Lord and Savior Jesus Christ sees us. I'm here to tell you today that you truly are amazing. All participants are muted. You truly are amazing. And I tell you that every day. And I mean that from my heart. I don't say it because it sounds good. I say it because it's the truth. The Bible says only the truth will set you free. My sister, my brother, you're going to want this word you're going to receive today. I, I'm, 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 I'm going to say that again. You don't just going to, you're not just going to want this word. You need this word. You need this word that will be spoken into your life today. And, and when I think about the goodness of Jesus, you see, because every day when you wake up in the morning, you have to care. Let me say that again. Every day when you wake up in the morning, you have to care. Care about what you're living. Care about what you're doing. Care about who you are. Care about who you hope to become. A question. Are you happy? living average or being average are you happy being average you know and and some of us have settled for an average life when god has called us to so much more as i said you're amazing if you're amazing that means you're able to do some amazing things and if you're not doing those things that can let's just say better define you as that man that woman that god sent you here to be is life really worth living? Are you happy being average? Now you gotta ask yourself now, am I putting my whole self in it? In this game called life? Or am I just settling for what comes or, or falls my way? And am I like that dog sitting at, under the table waiting for the scraps to be, you know, <laughs> knocked off the table so he can pick up the scraps? Or are you sitting at the table? Lord Jesus, are you sitting at the table? My God, my God. I'm here to tell you now, God is good. He's not sometimes good. He's always good. As a matter of fact, he's gooder than good, greater than great. I'm talking about a God that is able to do exceedingly and abundantly, above what you can actually or think, according to the power that would be in you. If you want to make your life count. You are, you will have to become someone you have never been. Ooh, if you really want to make it in this life, you will have to become someone you have never been. And, and I would dare say that it is necessary that you examine yourself. As I said, we're going to do some soul searching today. Because I think it's so very important that we understand that, you know, as men, women in the body of Christ, we have to live in such a way where we bring glory to God, where we esteem him through, our, through, through the evidence of how we have chosen to live our lives before him and before each other. And let me say this, even before yourself, because there are some times in our lives when we can even kind of, you know, feel bad about some of the things that we've done. I know I'm better than this. I I, I know I, I, I look in the, I know I'm better than that man, that woman I see in the mirror. So it is necessary. It is necessary for each and every one of us. It is necessary for each and every one of you to examine yourself. Matter of fact, scripture says to examine yourself and see if you're still in the faith. 
See, when you examine yourself, you should be able to see some things about yourself. And to thine own self, be true. You you want to you don't want to mm -mm, mm -mm, you don't want to play church. Understand, you are called to be the church. You know, so when you examine yourself, you're going to examine your lifestyle. You know, you you, you know what, what you're committed to living. You're going to examine the people you are allowing in your life. Those people that you're giving place and space to in your life. There might be some people that need to be in the balcony, but you have them in the front, in your front row, sitting right next to you. You know, oh Lord, I don't even want to go where I want to go. But the real deal is, you know what I'm talking about. You have to pay attention. Pay attention to the people you are allowing into your life. You know, there are times in my life, I know when I was out there and I wasn't living that life that I could have, should have been living. You know, I should have been asking myself, why did certain people want to be my friend? And they only wanted to be my friend because of what I was able to do for them in reference to, you know, the, the, shoot, the money that I was willing to spend and so on and so forth. The things that I was willing to do, the, the car, the, 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 the place that I had, the, 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 the so on and so forth. And people will use you. People will use you if you let them. You have to teach people how to treat you. Very important that you pay attention to the people you are allowing in your space, in your life. And then are you committed? Your commitment, are you committed to your purpose and to, and to the plan of God for your life? Are you committed to, the, to your purpose and plan of God and the plan of God for your life? And if you are committed to your purpose and the plan of God for your life, you have to be focused and committed to God. You have to be focused and committed to God. See, because that's the only way you're going to be able to really bring about his plan because it's not going to come by accident. You're not going to just fall into this thing here. And what has happened is many of us don't realize we have given place to sin. We have given place to sin. Let me give you my theme. Ignorance is a consequence of sin. Ignorance is a consequence of sin. Now, I have a lot for you. I'm not even going to try to give it all to you today. I got to leave some of this for you tomorrow because I realize ignorance is a consequence of sin. And we have to be able to examine ourselves. It's not about living an average, an average life. You are amazing. And it's time for you, it's time for God's people to act like it, to begin to live like it, to begin to put in place those things that need to be in place that will better define you. Time for you to let go some stuff. Time for you to change your mind, your perception of yourself. Mm, mm, mm. See, you can't control how other people, uh, let's just say, want to talk about you or how they might see you or perceive you. But you can control how you perceive yourself. And you have to pick and choose. Ooh, Lord Jesus. It's going to come out of a choice and a decision that you need to make each and every day how you choose to live your life. Mm, your life before God, before men. And when I say men, how we live before each other. See, and, and, and understand this. Life is lived on levels. Don't, don't miss this now. Life, your life is going to be lived on levels. Think about it now. You know, those of you that was out there in the world, and all of us, we born in the world. And, you know, the world has shaped us to a degree. But when we came to Jesus, we were willing to step away from that and start doing this new thing, but some or many have still held on to some of those old attitudes and behaviors that God is trying to get us to let go of so that we can better be, become those men and women he sent us here to be. You are better than what you have lived up to now. There's still something more in you. There's still something more about you. 
you haven't yet discovered. Oh, Lord Jesus. Did you hear what I said? There is still something more about you you haven't yet discovered. You know why? Because many of us are out here trying to create a life for ourselves and then neglecting to discover the life that God has purposed or called them to. You have, it's you, Lord Jesus. Discover, discover the great you that is in you, Lord Jesus. And you can do that when you come to this word of God. As I said, life is lived on levels. It's the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding that you were able to accumulate and to learn that will define you. Are you hearing me? It is the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding that you have been able to accumulate and to learn that will define you. Mm -mm -mm. It will not just define who you are. It will also define who you will become. It will define who you will become. Let's get into scripture. First Thessalonians 4.13. And I recognize and realize now, this is a very familiar verse of scripture for pastors and preachers and those that would do home going services and stuff like that. Matter of fact, let me read the text and then you'll know where I'm coming from. First Thessalonians 4.13. But I do not want you to be ignorant brothers and sisters, concerning those who have fallen asleep. Least you sorrow as others who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring him or her, those who sleep, those who are asleep in Jesus. Mm, mm, mm. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in that sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer, in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Now, now, this is one of the many texts that has been used at homegoing services for our departed family members and loved ones. But I don't want you to think that I am misrepresenting or misinterpreting the text, because this text is really referring to those who have died and are no longer walking among the land of the living, no longer here today. But the thought that I wanna share and leave with you today is, why are so many in the body of Christ sleepwalking or have joined the family of the walking dead? Think about that now. Why are so many in the body of Christ sleepwalking or have made a decision willingly, unwillingly, knowingly, unknowingly to join the family of the walking dead. My brother, my sister, those of you on the prayer line, those of you viewing this on social media, the blessing is you are still here. The Lord have not yet called you home. So my concern for you today is this, those of us or those of you who are walking around with your eyes wide shut, I'm hoping today's message will open your eyes to the reality of what you're living. And, and like I said, you don't wanna just live average. There is so much more to you than what you might be selling for. So my concern for you today is that it is for those of those of you who are walking around with your eyes wide shut, sleepwalking, mm, that you wake up and that you come to yourself and that you realize you can't waste another day with your eyes wide shut. You know, and, and, and I realize that, you know, many do not really know or are aware of what is really going on in their life. Now, I'm not talking about the people in the world now. I'm speaking to those of you in the body of Christ, those of you who confess to be Christians, unaware of what is really going on in your life or really what has taken place 
in the realm of the spirit. That's why, that's why this word of God, that's why the fellowship and the relationships that we have are vitally important. We have to be able to examine ourselves. And there are many important lessons that, that, that we can learn from the prodigal son who had to come to himself. My brothers and sisters, if you're out there, you're on this prayer line, you're viewing this on social media, do you have to come to yourself? Have you, let's just say, paid enough attention at what you're living today to, to, to be comfortable with yourself, to know that you're giving it your best shot, so to speak? In other words, I'm all in. I've made a decision to follow Christ. I've made a decision to live my best life now. And you know, when you look at that story of the prodigal son, you can learn that repentance, forgiveness, and redemption are all important aspects of our Christian journey, of our, of your Christian journey, your walk. Matter of fact, Luke 15, uh, verses 11 to 32 is the story of the prodigal son. But for the sake of time, I'll start at Luke 15 and 20. Luke 15 and 20. But I would dare say it would be a good story for you to go over once again on your own. You and the Holy Spirit, man, he will bring some wisdom. He will bring some truth to you that hopefully will inspire you and cause you to take an honest look within. Because that young man, prodigal son, he was selfish. Self-motivated, self-centered, and focused on himself and himself alone. But look at uh, Luke 15 and 20 says, and he arose and came to his father. After finding himself in a pig pen, eating, you know, he was eating with the hogs and the pigs and stuff and spending all his money, that, that that young man, the prodigal son, he found himself at a place in his life where he made a decision, it is better to, to go back home and to work for my daddy as a servant than to stay in this pig pen. Understand now, this young man was a Jew and to be in the pig pen, wow, mm, mm, mm. that is something that would, that I would say is supposed to be unheard of. But okay, and he, the prodigal son arose and came to his father. But when he was still a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. I'm, let me read this and then I'll come back. And the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight and am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, bring out the best robe and put it on him and put a ring on his hand and sandals on his feet and bring the fatted calf hair and kill it and let us eat and be merry. Lord, they wanted to have good fellowship. For this, my son was dead. Oh, Lord Jesus, there it is right here now. He was part of the walking dead. He was walking with his eyes. He was walking around with his eyes wide shut. He couldn't see nothing in the spirit. For this, my son was dead and is alive again. Oh, Lord. He was lost and now is found. And they began to be married. But that 24th verse right there defines what I'm talking about. You can still be walking around here with your eyes wide shut. You can still be walking, you know, in with, with the with the uh, uh, walking dead, with the walking dead, alive but walking around with the walking dead, or walking around dead yourself. Why? Because of the mere fact you have disconnected from God because of sin. Whew, this young man disconnected from his family because of sin, greed, and wanted to do his own thing. You see, and, and, and the story of the prodigal son is a picture of God's love for his children. You know, there was something I wanted to, to go back to in that, uh, in that uh, 20th verse. And it says, and, 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 and when the prodigal son arose and came to his father, but when he was still a great ways off, 
his father saw him and had compassion on him and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. The father it doesn't say the father went looking for him. See, I, I really do believe that, you know, I, let's just say our, our, our loved ones, our children, our sons, daughters, our, you know, those that we might hold near and dear to our hearts, we can love them and love them and love them to a degree. Whereas, you know, you know, you're wondering why are they living like that? And they can be out there in the world. And I mean, and they can be doing some, I'll just say shady stuff. They can be going to some shady places, dangerous places, doing some dangerous things. And this is why it doesn't say anything about the father going out there looking for him, because where would he start to look? But the real deal is, you know, it's not about compromising yourself or putting yourself in a position or in a place where you can bring harm to yourself. And there are times when we will, I mean, we see the posters up for, for runaway kids and stuff like that, so on and so forth. But, you know, I know someone that might be out there on them drugs and hanging out there doing those things that is unbecoming of what they were taught coming up as a child under good examples and the role models of good parents, so on and so forth. And hey, we all fall short. But we thank God and what this, this father, when he saw his son, see, all of us have to come to ourselves. All of us have to make a decision to not just come to ourselves, but come to but come to God. We have to make a decision to come to God. And that's the example even here. This young man coming to his father was like coming to God. And God loves us unconditionally. What he says, and the, and, 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 and the father ran to him and fell on his neck and kissed him. That's how much God loves you. Lord Jesus, that's how much God loves you. But you have to make a decision to choose him today. See, and, and God's love for you is like, man, it is amazing. See, God's love for you does not depend upon your faithfulness. Let me say that again. God's love for you does not depend upon your faithfulness. His love for you is unconditional. See, and matter of fact, the Bible says he loved us while we were yet sinners, while you were yet a sinner. And guess what? You are born in sin and shaped in iniquity, and we are still living, you know, at a level of sin. But what did, what did Christ do? He died for you. He died for each and every one of us. And even though we can be demanding and so easily drawn into sin, the Bible says we are all drawn away by our own lusts. God is still a loving father. He is still a loving father who will always remain faithful. Always remain faithful. You see, and we have to realize now, there is a real war going on in the realm of the spirit. Man, there's a real war going on in the realm of the spirit. And until we can open our eyes up to seeing really what is going on in the realm of the spirit. And this is why you, this is why we need God. And then you have to also realize now, the devil is not just after you. He is also after your children. He is also after your child. He is after your children. He's after your spouse. He's after your loved ones. He's after everybody. Mm, mm, mm. Especially those of us who are in the body of Christ. Those of us who've made that whew, mm, declaration, I want to be saved. I want to be a Christian. So today I would dare say it's time to wake up. It's time to wake up. It's time to come to yourself and see if you're still in the faith. You see, 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 the beautiful thing about this life is to know that even when we're not faithful, even when we're not living 
our best life before God and ourselves and each other. God is a promise keeper. I'm talking about a God that can't lie, can't die. Water can't drown him, fire can't burn him up, and time can't wear him out. I'm talking about the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end of everything. I'm talking about our soon coming King. I'm talking about a great God. And he has made a promise to never leave you or forsake you. Man. To never leave you or forsake you. You know, ooh, all of us have gone to some funerals, home going services. And there's some loved ones and some friends who have gone on home to be with the Lord. And they were not able to stay. They were not able to complete the journey with you. You are still here. But the, the real question today is, how do you choose to live your life, the balance of your days. You know, I look at my life, man. I look at where I'm at today and I recognize and realize, as I say all the time, I've lived more of my life than what I have left. I can't afford to make the mistakes today that I made when I was a younger man. Back then, I had time to regroup. I don't have that kind of time to, 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 to squander or to, or to, let's just say, mishandle. I can't afford to mishandle time because when I mishandle time, I'm mishandling my future. You can't afford to do that, my sister. You can't afford to do that, my brother. We have to come to ourselves and recognize and realize man, the Lord is here for you now. I'm going to say it again. The Lord is here for you now. He's here for you now. And I know there's going to be times in your life where you're going to feel like it's nobody but you. Nobody know what you're going through. Nobody know the pain. Nobody knows the discomfort. Nobody knows the fight that you're in. But I'm here to tell you today, there's a great God sitting high looking low. He know everything that you're going through. And he will never give you more than what you can bear. And he will always leave you a way of escape. See, and the beautiful thing about our promise keeper is he is always, he has always been there for you. He has always been there for us, for those of us who have confessed Christ, making him not just savior, but making him our Lord. Saints, it is vitally important because if you haven't done that, it's only because you're ignorant to the consequences of sin given place to sin. You have allowed that door to open, that door leading to the darkness, leading to the hurt, the pain, the shame. God wants us to come to ourselves. See, 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 understand the promise keeper. He will always be here for you. Not just today, not just yesterday, but he will also be there for you in the future. That's it. That's the beautiful thing. Man, I mean, your life story, man, it hasn't been told yet. Matter of fact, let's look at Joshua 1 and 7. Joshua 1 and 7. Only be strong and very courageous so that you may observe to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Lord Jesus. Old Testament, Lord Jesus. No longer under the law, but under grace. Thank you, Jesus. And look what he says now. Look at look, look at what, and this is what God is saying to you. I'm, this is Joshua 1 and 7, but this is God speaking to you. Do not turn from it from the from to the right or to the left hand. Do not turn from that word of God so that you may prosper wherever you go. So that you may prosper wherever you go. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it, on it, day and night, 
so that you may observe to do according to all that is written in the book. For then you will make your way prosperous and then you will have good success. You have to do it God's way. Then you will have good success. Now, what was so beautiful about this was that ninth verse repeats the seventh verse. And any time in scripture when you have God repeating something, it is because he wants you to pay attention to what he's saying to you. And what does he say? Say in the ninth verse, have I not commanded you? Have I not commanded you? Be strong and of a good courage. And do not be afraid or be dismayed because the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Man, the ignorance of that will bring sin into your life. This is why you have to have a working knowledge of this word of God. Ignorance is having a lack of wisdom, knowledge, and understanding on how to live your life in service to God while getting the most out of life while you are still here. Lord Jesus, a lack of wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Where do you go for that? B-I-B-L-E, believers' instructions before leaving earth. You will get the most out of this life when you put the most of yourself into living your best life now. Are you hearing me? You have to be all in, my brother, my sister. You have to be all in, all in. Because if this gospel be hidden, it is hidden from those of us who are lost. Thank you, Jesus. Once I was lost, but now I'm found. Once I was blind, but now I see. What did I say at the start of this message? At the start of the message, for those of you who may have come on late, here's what I said. Every day when you wake up in the morning, you have to care. Lord Jesus, every day that you wake up in the morning, you have to care. Care about what you're living. Care about who you are. Care about who you hope to become. Man, do you really care? Or do you just want to live and be average? Man. Man, you haven't even seen the best side of yourself yet. There's still more to you that you haven't yet discovered. But if you're going to settle for a less than life, then guess what? You're going to get a less than life. The Bible says, as a man, as a woman, so, so shall you reap. As a man, as a woman, so, so shall you reap. You will get the most out of this life when you put the most of yourself into living your best life now. You see, 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 when you have, when you have a lack of learning, when you, you what, what's going on is you're closing the doors that can lead to a blessed and prosperous life or future. You have understand, hey, look here, life, the earth, matter of fact, earth, this earth that we share, this life that we all share, matter of fact, it is a school. Every day, hey, you might've went to school, you might've finished high school, college, got your degrees, got all of the, you know, all of these uh, 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 awards and accolades for these great accomplishments, but understand every day something more can be learned. Every day you can experience that something that can better define you or, or matter of fact, define you, make you better, or you can fall into that something that can take away from the, 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 the blessed person, the blessed man, woman, you were sent here to be. And it's based upon the choice and decision. Choose you this day. We have to become Bereans. In other words, you got to study this word for yourself. Because when you're not studying, when you're not learning from this word of God, what you're doing is you're closing the doors that would lead to opportunity, closing the doors that would lead to a, 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 a life that would be, let's just say, a, a, a more blessed life a more blessed future. Man, information is powerful. Hey, we're in the information age now. 
you know, they had the agricultural, they had the, you know, the uh, plantation, that, well, you know, they had different ages, you know, the, oh, Lord, we are in the information age now. Why? With all of this technology, the computers and, and you know, the, the I mean, I mean, I remember coming up looking at, uh, 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 there was this, uh, I can't even think of the name of this guy. He walked, uh, Dick Tracy, Dick Tracy. And, and he had this uh, watch that he would talk in. And uh, anyway, he had this technology that was advanced, not knowing that we would have this technology today that would, you know, we would be able to do our banking on a telephone. We would be able to, you know, read our Bibles. We would be able to, you know, to, 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 to just uh, plan. We'd be able to do a, so many things on our telephone. We can unlock our homes. We can we can turn our lights on, turn our lights off. We can do so. We can start our cars with our telephone. There's so many things you can do with a telephone today, Lord Jesus, that back in the day couldn't even see that, couldn't even believe that. Why? Because we are constantly this world, this life. We are constantly evolving within within something that is bigger than ourselves. And this is why information is powerful. Information is powerful. And we have to open ourselves up to getting as much information as we possibly can get. Not just the information that will, let's just say, that will uh, uh, define us as Christians, men, women, and the body of Christ. Yes, I want to read that word. Yes, I want to know that word. Yes, I want to, let's just say, get to that place where I know based upon scripture, that I am somebody because God didn't make no junk. But I also have to go beyond the book. I want to be able to experience the different things and elements and different things that God has made available to all of us. And we have to be able to keep ourselves informed in reference to exposing ourselves to materials or whatever it is that your call, that call is that is on your life. You want to be able to study. You want to be able to open yourself to gleaming that information that will better sharpen your tools or sharpen you so that you would be able to operate at a level that is, let's just say, better than where you were yesterday. See, and it's about growing, growing, evolving. You're not the same man. You're not the same woman that you used to be, that you were last year. You come into a new year. Now, are you going to live that old life? Or are you going to continue to, to keep walking, talking, acting like, behaving like that person who's broke, busted, and disgusted? That's someone who's still out there gallivanting, running with the wrong people in the wrong crowd, you know, not paying attention to the choices and decisions that you're making? Or are you going to make that decision based upon your relationship with Christ? I'm not going to be ignorant to the consequences of sin. And I'm going to do what I need to do to, 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 to please my God. See, so, 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 so we're talking about information that can be life changing. We're talking about information that can positively influence you and not just influence you, but also influence the direction of your life. God wants you to be blessed. God wants you to be blessed. And as much as you might want to be blessed, you can't do this without him. And this is why we have to be all in. This is why we have to walk by faith and not by sight. Praise God. Walk by faith and not by sight. Ignorance is a consequence of sin and is the gateway for the devil to come into your life. Ignorance is a consequence of sin and is the gateway for the devil to come into your life. Now, when we talk about gateways, we're talking about the eye gate, the ear gate, the nose gate, the mouth gate. You know, these are all gateways and the enemy is always trying to get in to God's people. You don't have to worry about getting into the people of the world. He in there already. He got them already. They're already on lockdown. They blind. But you, my sister, you, my brother, you have to guard your spirit. The Bible says he was unable to guard his spirit. It's like a city that is broken down without walls. 
In other words, anybody can come in, steal, take, do whatever they want to do. And this is why you want to guard your heart. Because out of the heart comes the issues of life. Ignorance is a consequence of sin. Ignorance is a consequence of sin. And this is why give no place to the devil. This is why we have to pay attention to what we're living, to the choices and decisions that we have made on how we are choosing to live our life. My brother, my sister, I say it every day. You are amazing. It's time to act like it. It's time to act like it. Woo so if you need to get like that prodigal son and come to yourself, wake up, come back to the father, man, let this be that day when you make your turnaround and you begin to seek after that life that would be pleasing to God and one that would define you as a true man, true woman of God. My sister, my brother, mm, 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 I love you. But as much as I love you, know the Lord loves you even more. So don't forget now, ignorance is a consequence of sin. Let's pray. Dear God, dear Father, we want to say thank you. Thank you for yet another day. Thank you, Lord God, for allowing us, Lord God, to come forth today, clothed in our right minds. And Father God, we've heard something today that have caused us to think about what we're living. And Lord, truly, we want to live our life to please you. We want to become the best version of ourselves. And we recognize and realize we can't do that without you. You've called us to be wise master builders. And Lord God, I thank you, Lord God, that we're not building our lives, you know, uh, on, on sand, but we're building our lives on that rock, which is Christ. And Father God, we love you today. And we're asking for the forgiveness of sin. And we're asking you to bless us, Lord God, to continue to grow and evolve into the men and women you've sent us here to be. We are so blessed and so thankful to know that our God is forever faithful. Lord, I pray that you would keep us mind, body, soul, and spirit. Keep us covered under the blood. And Lord God, I just pray that you will continue to bless each and every one whether viewing on social media or if you're on the prayer line, I'm asking your favor. I'm asking your grace. I'm asking your love to be showered upon each and every one of us today, right now, in Jesus' name, amen and amen. To God be the glory for the grace and precious things he's now doing in all of our lives. God bless you, saints.